in Slovenia to drive Mercedes' new A-Class. It's not like the old car, it's not a stand-up car, it's not a tall boy. It's a low-down, sporty, young person's car. It's full of attitude, it's full of strong design lines, it's full of passion, it's full of driving pleasure. It's what Mercedes want their younger audience to drive. Cars that are fun, cars that are beautifully built, but also cars that give you a big smile on your face. Let's see how good the new car is. As you can see from the profile, it's low, it's sporty, it's got a really big nose, some very aggressive detailing. Look at that big head amp, look at the big inlet for the brakes. It's really, really aggressive. And as you go to the back, you can see this is not a very practical sort of body. That's what Mercedes are going to use for the B-Class. This is lower, sporty or younger, nice tight back. And overall, this is a car you'd love to pose with. It's a great car to be seen in. It's a young person's car. It's not a practical family car. That much is clear. The new A-Class is built on Mercedes' new modular front architecture. So it's not rear wheel drive like a C-Class, E-Class or an S-Class. And because these cars are built on a platform that have to meet a lower cost target, the A-Class doesn't really have that build quality which you expect. I know expecting this car to have the build of an E-Class is asking for too much, but still, I'm slightly disappointed. And there's no doubt, this car does feel robustly screwed together, and it's easily tougher than something like an Audi. It's just that with a star on the nose, you expect it to be unnecessarily over-engineered, like most Mercs are, and you expect that tank-like build quality. As with the character of this car, it's low and it's sporty. The suspension setup is also very sporty. It's got fantastic straight line stability. You can just hold on to speeds as high as 200 without having to bother. It feels like a big car, something like an E-Class, as stable as that. And that gives you a lot of confidence. The big challenge for Mercedes on this car was extracting maximum agility from this transverse engine front wheel drive platform. The earlier A and B class were not driver's cars by any stretch of imagination. And for the new A class to succeed, driver appeal was considered essential. So Merck did it the old fashioned way. They poured money into solid engineering. The rear suspension for example looks as complex and as detailed as something on an E class. The chassis feels incredibly stiff and initial impressions are so good there's almost a sense of disbelief. Can this car really be this good? As you can see, the stability of this car is just first rate. It feels as stable and as well planted as something like an E-Class or a C-Class. And that's really a big surprise in a car of this size. Remember, this is a transverse engine front wheel drive car. And Mercedes has done a stellar job to give you this sort of planted stance and this sort of stability. To complement the character of this car, this particular car is set up a little stiffer than normal. So you feel a few of the bumps, you feel a bit of the pitter patter, you feel the expansion joints, the car moves around a bit, but it's not uncomfortable, it's quite nice and once Mercedes gets the car to India, they will raise the suspension and soften it a bit for our terrible road. This may be Mercedes' entry car, the A-Class, but they haven't spared any expense or effort. Just look at the interior. It's beautifully done, it's designed with a lot of flair. There's a luxury touch to it and a lot of the materials feel just as good as on the bigger cars. Quality and fit and finish on the inside are well up to Merck's standards. The insides are as well put together as a C-Class, there are plenty of metallic highlights to liven up the cabin and there's enough kit available here to make it feel like a pakka luxury car. The design of the cabin is just as radical as the exterior. The emphasis clearly on sportiness, again. The theme of the cabin is dictated by electroplated chrome vents. The entire dash is covered in what looks like carbon fiber and it's pretty clear Mercedes is targeting a much younger audience with this car. In the back it's surprisingly comfortable and that's despite the low roof. The seat is supportive in the right places, headroom is acceptable and there's quite a bit of legroom. This car does have a long wheelbase, it stretches to 2.7 meters. The 341-litre boot, however, is quite tiny. 
and that's despite the fact that Mercedes has ditched the spare wheel like BMW has. Merck did however mention that there could be a spare for some markets and we are assuming India is one of them. Because of the focus on fuel economy, most new steering systems are electric. That of course normally means less fuel and less driver enjoyment. But not in this case. Even though this is an electric steering system, there is a lot of feel to it, there is a lot of effort that has gone into designing it well and it's really come out pretty nicely. You can't tell it's an electric unless you really pay attention. You don't miss having the feel of a hydraulic system and that's really nice. Unless you're driving really quick that is, when after a few minutes at full charge, you do notice that there's a bit of a dead zone in the center and that does rob you of some confidence. Mercedes say it's going to cost you around 20 lakhs for the new A-Class. That's a lot of money. But on the flip side, this is a really, really attractive car. It's perfect for young at heart people who want to drive themselves. It's attractive looking, beautifully built on the inside, drives like a dream. Maybe they have something here.